It's nice to talk about meaningful Chicago Bears football games in the month of December. My name is Harrison Graham. You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. Bears, Browns in Cleveland this Sunday, December 17th. And how about the Browns only being a three-point favorite at home? The over-under between these two teams, 37 and a half. So Vegas predicts a low-scoring tight affair. Uh, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of this matchup as we progress here, but do want to take a look at kind of the projected injury reports, the official injury reports, uh, at least the first one of the week, will come out on Wednesday, filming this Tuesday night. Uh, for Chicago, pretty clean. Equinemia St. Brown, he's week to week with a pec injury. I don't expect him to play. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe suffered a minor ankle thing uh, this past week. Uh, we should know more as the week progresses. Hopefully he's able to go, but otherwise uh, should be a clean bill of health for Chicago. That is not true for Cleveland. Uh, they've got some major injury news here. Jedrick Wills uh, is not returning. He had surgery. He had been on short-term IR. He is not coming back. They're starting left tackle. Daywan Jones just went on IR. They're, they're right tackle with the knee issue. Uh, so they're playing with a back, pair of backup offensive tackles. Their center dealt with the stinger last week, left that game. Uh, you would think he'd be able to return, but we'll see. Uh, Jerome Ford dealing with the wrist itch issue. Grant Delpit, a groin issue. Juan, Thor Juan Thornhill's been out with a calf injury. Denzel Ward likely returns this week. He's missed a few weeks with the shoulder injury, but we'll see on that one. Uh, Ogbo Okoronkwo uh, is dealing with a groin injury. Jordan Elliott, a concussion. Maurice Hurst, they just put on IR. The point is, is the Bears are much healthier. And by the way, a lot of those Browns players, like, key contributors, and that doesn't even consider guys like Deshaun Watson, obviously, who's out for the year, Nick Chubb, who's out for the year. So if you're the Bears, you're catching the Browns at a very good time, like a very, very good time. So I think you should be uh, excited about the opportunity if you are Chicago and a great chance to go win a tough game on the road in Cleveland this weekend. So who you got? Type CHI for the Bears, type CLE for the Cleveland Browns, let us know in the comments section who you got winning this game. Now stay tuned. Later on, I will give my score prediction uh, and let you know who wins this game. But first, I uh, do want to get to, to my game plan and want to remind you guys to subscribe to the show. Subscribe and join us live on Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Time. We got you covered for an hour and 15 minute pregame show and then also uh, full playoff play coverage starting at noon. So join us Sunday, 1045 a.m. Central Time. Okay, let's get to the Week 15 preview. My game plan for the most part here, D-line domination. And that starts with Montez Sweat, who has just been a force since Chicago traded for him at the trade deadline. Um, I mentioned those two offensive tackles, Jedrick Wills and Daywan Jones, aren't playing. So this defensive line that's been playing much better uh, should be able to feast on Sunday with that offensive tackle situation being as bad as it is. Montez Sweat's been terrific. Even Yannick Ngakwe had a sack last week. The interior guys like Justin Jones and Jervon Dexter have been pretty productive as of late as well. I expect the Bears front four to perform pretty well in this one. And then obviously, if you're Matt Eberflus, keep picking those spots uh, to dial up blitzes, which Flus has had a pretty good feel for when to do that over the last few weeks. All right, number two, uh, how about Fields' Cleveland redemption? Uh, we all remember, at least, um, maybe you don't <laughs> uh, want to remember, but uh, you should remember Justin Fields' first start in the NFL. He got sacked nine times. He was on his back. Matt Nagy kept running empty sets, did not help Jason Peters uh, at all, and uh, it was a disaster, to say the least. Uh, the numbers are even worse than they look, to be completely honest. Six of 20, 68 yards. Uh, didn't turn it over, so that's something. QB rating of 41.2, the nine sacks. If you take uh, the sack yards, which was 67 yards, the Bears had one net passing yard in Justin Fields' first career start. It is some of the worst coaching malpractice I have ever witnessed uh, to this day. And to be honest, th if the Bears had any humility at all, they would have fired Nagy after that game because that was a joke of a game plan for a rookie quarterback who, by the way, got no reps uh, in training camp that year because they were trying to scrape out games with Andy Dalton, put him out into the fire in a bunch of empty sets with no extra protection against a defensive line that was unblockable that day. Unreal. He gets redemption this time, hopefully. Let's go. Gets a second crack to go win a game in Cleveland. Speaking of Justin Fields, predict his stats this week. Hopefully it's better this time around. Can't be much worse. 
uh, drop your predictions uh, for his stat line in the comment section. And while you do that, go ahead and get some new clothing with Marine Lair. The holidays are here, and I have found the softest clothes known to man with Marine Lair. MarineLair.com slash chat sports. Get you 15% off, and their clothes make for the perfect gifts this holiday season. You can get all of your shopping done at Marine Lair. They've got amazing gifts for guys and gals like sweaters, T-shirts, overshirts, beanies, you name it. I'll be getting some absurdly soft stuff for my wife, Anna, my son, PJ. They'll be hooked up in no time. I think my favorite items are from their Winter Archive Collection, the super vintage ski-inspired with a ton of bright colors, color block puffer vests, and more. And the best part, free shipping and returns for an entire year. No questions asked, so I don't have to worry about getting some of the wrong size color or anything. They can send it back. Free returns will be good to go. By the way, if you are going to shop at Marine Lair for Christmas, just be sure to do so by December 18th. Still got six days here. To get your Christmas shopping done with Marine Lair, you will get it in time for Christmas. MarineLair.com slash chat sports. I'm rocking the Asher print sweater button down in Blue Geo, uh, but tons of cool stuff over there at Marine Lair. 10% off for a limited, or 15% off, excuse me, a limited time only at MarineLair.com slash chat sports. 15% off MarineLair.com slash chat sports. That link is in the comments and in the description. Go check out Marine Lair today. Okay, let's continue with our preview here against the Browns. Lean on Deontay Foreman um, for a couple of reasons. One, he's been your best running back. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Khalil Herbert, but since the in high ankle sprain, he looks slower to me. He doesn't look right. Uh, so I think you lean on Foreman here with Roshan as your number two back. And the other reason is the Browns have the number one passing defense in the NFL, largely due to Miles Garrett and that front. They can really get after it. Uh, I think you want to run the football here. Uh, Foreman's a guy that can, you know, be a steadying force on this offense. He can wear some defenses down. Uh, I don't expect this to be one of those Justin Fields goes crazy games. Like, he needs to manage this type of game. Like, Cleveland's defense is tough. They picked off Trevor Lawrence three times last week. Um, you know, it, it's going to be more of a ball control, take care of the football type of approach, in my opinion, uh, if I'm – Chicago and Deontay Foreman, this might be a 20-plus carry game for him, really. I mean, I think you need to try and wear down Cleveland's uh, front seven and uh, try to win the football game. Obviously, you're still evaluating fields. You obviously still want to throw the football, get him on the move. But I think running the ball with him is going to make sense in this game as well. Like, uh, I don't think doing straight drop backs 35, 40 times in this game is going to make a ton of sense. Speaking of quarterbacks, how about the other one? Joe Flacco, who's played fairly well since returning – uh, I think this is a good opportunity to expose him if you are Chicago. You look at Flacco's numbers, the completion percentage is low, but he's thrown for good yardage, five touchdowns against two interceptions. QB rating's been fine, uh, nothing crazy. But you look at his last four years, everybody's like, oh my God, you seen what Joe Flacco's doing? Joe Flacco has not been his starting quarterback, a high-level one at least, for over half a decade at this point. Like, He's never started more or played in more than eight games in any of the past four years, and in three, the last three, it's been five or less. Uh, and he's been pedestrian numbers wise. Like this is not a quarterback that is going to perform at a high level, in my opinion. He should struggle, especially against this Bears defense that's playing really good right now. Defense should travel in December. And by the way, uh, similar weather conditions that the Bears are used to out in Cleveland. Um, I give Flacco credit for how he's performed coming off the couch, but uh, this defense is cooking. And by the way, I'll mention it a third time. Flacco's playing behind two backup offensive tackles. You should be able to tee off on this guy. I'm not saying he's not going to make any plays, but uh, I think that uh, a quarterback who's 38 years old really hasn't been that great in a long time. Uh, I kind of think the Flacco mania slows down a bit this week if the Bears do what they're supposed to. And then play with an attitude. you got to take the energy to the road. I thought the Bears did a good job of that in Minnesota, even though that was an ugly game. But you know, that game was 12-10, to 10, and I could see this game being similar. I think there will be more points than that, but you got to bring the juice, the edge to this one. Uh, the Bears are confident right now. You can tell when you watch them fly around defensively and just – uh, how they're talking uh, after these games and just the vibe around the team that they feel good about the way they're playing. But look, if you're trying to make the playoffs, be in, you know, get in in there at nine and eight. Uh, that's what you got to be. You got to be nine and eight. You got to play with this confidence, this swagger, this attitude right now because there's no margin for error. It, it, it's pretty clear when you uh, look at the playoff scenarios. If they drop even one game, your chances plummet of making the postseason. So, uh, got to take care of business. And I, I view this game as the last. 
a major hurdle before week 18 because if you win this one, you will have won three in a row. You come home to play two warm weather teams in Chicago in December against uh, Arizona and Atlanta. A uh, great opportunity to get to eight and eight and then play the Packers on the road in week 18, which who knows, that could have major implications. Uh, but uh, none of it matters if you can't beat the Browns this week. All right, uh, so there you have it. Predict the score of Bears versus Browns. Who's going to win and what is the final score going to be? Drop your score predictions in the comment section below. I think the Bears find a way. I, you know, I think Cleveland, even with the backup quarterback, is a better overall team than Chicago. But they've got a lot of injuries, man. And, and I think the Bears are playing their best football right now. I think you're catching the Browns at, at the right time injury-wise. And this is an opportunity to make another statement if you're Matt Eberflus. Like, you go win this game on the road. You've won three games in a row against above 500 teams. Bears 23-17. Justin Fields makes just enough plays. Cairo Santos goes three for three on field goals. And the defense gets a couple of key turnovers off of Joe Flacco. I think uh, they get it done to improve to 6-8. and eight. And... Obviously, as you look at the NFC playoff picture right now, if you get to 6-8, and eight, that gets you closer to a playoff spot. Right now, the 7 seed does have six wins, uh, as it is the Green Bay Packers. Now, obviously, there are four other teams with six wins as well, but uh, still a lot of traffic to guide through, but uh, that's why you got to take care of your own business first. Now, you look at the Week 15 rooting guide real quick. The logo you see next to each game is who I think needs to win. Obviously, Vikings at Bengals need Cincinnati to win. Anytime any of these NFC... Uh, Middling teams are playing an AFC team. It's obvious you want the AFC team to win. Go since he go. Uh, Tampa at Green Bay. I think it's better if Tampa wins it uh, and uh, maybe goes ahead and wins that division. Uh, that one doesn't matter as much. Could go either way, but I think it's a little better if Tampa wins it. Giants at Saints. Uh, you want uh, the Giants to win. They have five wins. The Saints have six. You also lost the head-to-head -to, -head to New Orleans, so you'd like to see them drop that game. Falcons at Panthers. I still think you want Carolina to lose. Uh, until uh, that number one seed is clinched for Chicago. So, unfortunately, a six-win team, you need to win there. Uh, Commanders at Rams, can Washington get going again? They've struggled for several weeks now, but maybe they can steal one coming off a of bye week. And then Eagles at Seahawks. Um, Eagles need to get back on track. Seattle's lost four in a row. That would drop them to six and eight with the loss. So, fly, Eagles, fly. That would certainly be a big help. And look, again, if you're the Bears, went out, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, control what you can control. If you get to 9-8 and eight and don't get in, so be it. But uh, that would show us a lot if this team could win the last four, which would mean you'll win the last six after a 3-8 and eight start to get to 9-8. and eight. I think if you win this week, it's possible. This feels like a big hurdle, though, at Cleveland. But I like the Bears' chances because they're catching the Browns at a good time with their health situation. All right, guys, appreciate everybody for tuning into this video. We'll be back tomorrow for two more episodes. We'll have a morning episode and a uh, afternoon episode, so we will see you guys then. Bear down.